Hi, and welcome to our tutorial on how to use a second screen um, in the kind of extended mode instead of just duplicating to a second screen. Uh, my name is Sabrina Riley. I'm a teacher here at Marlboro High School, and um, I've been using a second screen most of this year, both when we've been in person and when we've been remote. And I think that there's a lot of functionalities that you'll see here today that can really uh, help you as you move into whatever model you're gonna be teaching in. Uh, also, if you're not teaching, but you find yourself on computer all day, uh, this having two screens can really be helpful for this. So the first thing we're gonna show you is kind of how to set it up so that you are actually utilizing your second screen. And then what are some kind of functionalities that you can get out of having your screen extended versus, versus just duplicated, which might be what you've been used to in the past. So the first thing I've done is I've hooked up my second screen. In this case, it is a projector screen because um, I think that this might show you how you could potentially use this with students in front of you in your classroom and also with students online. But you could also do this with just a second monitor if you're sitting at a desk at home or something like that, but you also have a second monitor. All of the steps that I'm gonna show you today can be utilized the same way with a regular second monitor or a projector screen. So I have my computer set up here and I've connected my projector to it. But as I can see, I only have things showing up on my laptop screen and my second projector screen is blue right now. Uh, that's just because of the settings that it's on. So I'm gonna show you how to fix those settings first and then we'll get going. So on my regular laptop screen, I'm going to right click and I will see display settings as one of the options. If I choose that, I can tell right away that my computer knows that there is two screens because I see a one and a two. So I know at least my computer's set up the right way. I just don't have it using the second screen right now. So I'm gonna scroll down to this where it says multiple displays. And I see that it's set at show only on one. So everything I'm doing is showing only on my laptop screen. I'm gonna change that. I'm first gonna change it to duplicate these displays, which is probably what you've used in the past when you've had your computer hooked up to a projector. It's gonna ask me if I wanna keep the changes. I have to do that. And now I can see that whatever's on my laptop is exactly what will show up on my projector. This has been really helpful in traditional teaching when we might have all of our students sitting right in front of us and we're gonna show a PowerPoint or something or a video and I don't really care that my laptop screen is exactly what my students are seeing. Now, this might be a little different this year and that's why we wanna to try to look at what the extended screen can do for us. So I'm gonna again, change my display setting where it says multiple dis displays and choose extend these displays. I'm gonna choose that and then I'm gonna choose keep changes. Now it's gonna look a little weird at first what you're gonna see on your second screen is just whatever your desktop background is. Mine happens to be my dog, Zeke. Um, and you might be like, where is everything, right? Because it's not the duplicated screen that you're used to. That's okay. As long as you see some kind of picture up there, your, back your background or something, it's gonna work. So now I can close my display settings. And now I'm gonna start to just kind of open up all of the things that I might wanna use. So I'm gonna go to my Google extension. And I know that what I use on a daily basis is Google Classroom. I use Aspen, which is my grading system, but any grading system you might be using. And I'm going to open up my Google Drive so that I can show you what we would do when we want to share different documents, maybe a Google Doc or a Google Slide with the students in front of me and the students at home. But first, I'm just going to open my classroom and I'm gonna show you how I could get this over to my extended screen. I'm gonna open up a couple of things just so that you can see how both of these things are used at the same time. So I now have my Aspen open, which is my grading system, and I have my Google Classroom open. Um, the last thing that I wanna do before I actually start dragging things is I'm gonna go back to my settings my display settings. And I see here that screen one, which is my laptop, is on the right side of my screen two, which is my projector. Uh, this happens to be how my 
computer is set up right now, I, my laptop is actually on the right side of my um, screen, but sometimes it might be backwards. And these screen buttons can just be dragged to move them. So if I was sitting on that side of the classroom and I still wanted to have kind of my directionality to what makes sense to what I'm seeing, I could drag my screen and then I would just have to click apply so that it recognizes that now when I move things to this direction, it's gonna to go to my extended screen. This isn't what I want right now because I know that my projector is on my left side. So I'm gonna put it back to this. If you get lost in terms of which screen is which, you can click this identify button and it will tell you your laptop is screen one and my projector is screen two, if you get kind of lost or confused. So mine is set up correctly, but if you are having trouble and you feel like you're dragging things to your extended screen and it doesn't seem like it's going anywhere, it could be because of this setting and you might wanna come check it out. So I'm gonna go back to Google and I'm gonna say, okay, I wanna show my students where an assignment is on Google Classroom. So instead of having it as duplicated like I did before, I'm just gonna click on this tab and I'm gonna drag it to the left, to my left, because that's where my second screen is. So I'm just gonna click and drag, and now I can see it pops up on my second screen. It's no longer on my first screen. So what's on my second screen, what my students are seeing, is different than what's on my first screen. This is super helpful if you have like your email open, right? You don't want your students seeing your email. And this is also gonna be really helpful when you have Zoom open. I don't need my Zoom call up on my screen, but I do want my students that are sitting in front of me to be able to see their assignments. So maybe I would then come into my classroom and I might start talking to them and telling them, okay, here's where you're gonna find today's classwork. And my mouse is over here on my second screen. Nothing is happening on my first screen. If I need to come back to my first screen, I'm just gonna move the cursor back over to my first screen. And now I'm over here on my first screen and I can start doing things over here if I need to. And it doesn't impact what's up on the second screen. So this again is really helpful for if what you're doing on your projector for your students is different than what you're doing on your computer and you don't want them to see both. The other thing I love this for I do all my grading in Google Classroom now because all my assignments are in Google Classroom, but I have to input my grades into Aspen, our grading system. I can have their assignments that I already graded in Classroom open on my second screen, have my Aspen open on my first screen. I can do the grading inputting of the grades without flipping back and forth between tabs, which might be what you were doing before. Um, so now that we've kind of gone through the basics of how to set up your extended screen, how to make sure it's in the right orientation and how to drag something to your second screen. We'll now get into how this would look if you have a Zoom call open with some kids at home and also some people in the building. So now that we have kind of gone over our basics, I'm gonna show you what this looks like with Zoom. And kind of the most important part with that is being able to share something with your class that's in front of you and also share something with your students that are at home at the same time. So I am now in my Zoom profile. If you use Google Meets, this would work the exact same way. Just the um, sharing button might look a little bit different, but um, the kind of idea behind it's gonna be the same. So I'm gonna start my meeting and we should have some students joining us on this call soon. I'm joining with my computer audio. I, there's one of my students. Um, I do have a secondary video camera on here. It's a webcam that's plugged in. If I wanted to um, choose my camera, if I have a second camera plugged in, I just need to go next to the video button here on Zoom and select the camera that I'm using. Mine is defaulting to my web camera that's plugged in, but if um, I didn't have a webcam plugged in, it would just default to your regular uh, camera. All right, so they just had to test the fire alarm, so we got a little distracted. The fire department is going to be testing the alarm, so there's no need to leave the building. All right, is that a joke? The building. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> That's a joke. But we are in Zoom. My two students are here. Um, and we do have one of my students recording so that you will be able to see what it looks like on the student end of Zoom as well. Uh, so I wanna share a Google document with my students who are at home and my students who are sitting in front of me. And remember, I already have my screens extended. So I'm going to take my cursor and come over to my second screen. So now I'm over here where my um, Google Classroom is open. I think I want to show them something out of my Google Drive. So I'm gonna go into my Google Drive and I'm going to open a document that I know I wanna share with them, that I wanna show them. Um, and let's see. I'll share this document with them. So maybe I want to explain to my students how they are going to be doing their test corrections this year. And I need both groups of students to see it. So on my Zoom screen, I'm going to click share screen and I'm gonna see a bunch of options pop up. And this is a little overwhelming, but really the only ones that you should be concerned about here are, it says screen one and screen two are your first two options. So that is screen one is my laptop screen, screen two is my projector screen. And it actually shows the numbers up there for you so that you can see that. I want my students at home to see screen two just like my students in front of me are seeing. So I'm gonna choose screen two and I'm gonna click share. I think that my students at home are seeing my document. If I really wanted to check, I could say, students, are you seeing the AP Bio multiple choice test corrections document? Yes, we are. Awesome, thank you so much. So I can ask them. Um, I'll also notice that when I click share screen, my laptop Zoom screen looks a little bit different. It kind of moves the images around and I see a, a bar at the bottom of my laptop screen that says you are screen sharing. So now I can do everything that I would want to do in like a normal classroom setting um, with the students at home and the students in the building seeing the exact same thing. If I decide that I want to show them a PowerPoint, I can leave my screen sharing if I want and then just go open that PowerPoint or if I'm feeling like maybe I'll open the wrong thing and I don't really wanna deal with that, I could stop screen sharing and click stop share on the bottom bar that was on my laptop screen. Now, nothing's being shared. Now I can go back to my extended screen and I could open up my Google Slides and I could share it the exact same way. Um, if you're concerned about what this would look like, I can show you I'm gonna open up my Google slide presentation. I can put it into the full present mode, just like I would in a normal school year, right? I want my whole projector to have the PowerPoint on it. I'm gonna present it. I'm not sharing anything yet. So my students in front of me are seeing this PowerPoint right now once it loads. And my students at home are just seeing me talk to them. I'm gonna click share screen again. I'm gonna choose screen two and I'm gonna click share. Now my students at home can see this PowerPoint. The students in front of me are seeing the PowerPoint and I can talk through it and they will see whatever I do on this screen, that's what they're seeing also. If you feel as though you are kind of losing track of where your Zoom controls are, what you're looking for is what is on my laptop screen right now. There's this little green bar down here that says you are screen sharing and it has the option to stop sharing. If you hover over that, that's when you'll see the other controls that you're used to on Zoom pop up. So I have the option to mute myself, I could stop my video, I can check what the security settings are, all of my normal controls. The only thing I don't see down here right now is my chat button. I'm gonna come over on my screen to where it says more on my Zoom screen, and my chat is all the way up here at the top and I could open up my chat. Here it is just on my laptop. So it doesn't mess with my PowerPoint. It doesn't mess with what my kids at home are seeing or my kids in front of me are seeing, but I now have my chat open in case one of my students at home needs to ask me a question in the chat. Um, 
This is the one really big benefit to having your extended screen, having the two screens when you're trying to present something on Zoom. Because I know a lot of us have probably tried to present something on Zoom using one screen and you have to say to everyone that's on your Zoom, I can't see you and I can't see the chat. So if you need me, yell at me, right? Unmute yourself and say something. Um, this makes it a little bit easier. Now I can see my chat and I can see what I'm presenting at the same time. And so if a student does have a question, they need to ask you something, they're gonna tell you that they'll be back in a couple minutes because they need to go to the bathroom. They can still just chat and you have that there and no one else is seeing it. If you like feel like you lose your chat, this happens to me all the time. I open up four more tabs on my first screen and all of a sudden I can't find my chat. It's usually hiding behind all of your Chrome tabs. I just minimize things and it's usually just gonna be like all the way at the back here on your desktop, kind of hiding by your desktop. Um, it happens to me a lot. I don't, I'm sure there's an easier way for, to get it back, but I just sometimes lose it. And so I just kind of minimize my uh, tabs until I see it again. Um, I can also look at my participants list here still if I need to, if for some reason I hear like all the Zoom sounds of kids logging off and I'm like, where did they go? Um, I can open up my participant screen still and kind of see who's still there. Uh, so again, I would stop sharing my screen here. I'm done presenting my PowerPoint. I'm gonna stop sharing. Um, my PowerPoint is still up on my second screen. So my students in front of me are still seeing that, but now I have to remember my students at home aren't seeing it. So if I forgot to say something, I might need to go back and share it again. I just don't wanna forget about my kids at home. I have to remember every time I stop sharing, now all they're seeing is my face and hearing my voice, but they aren't seeing what's kind of, you know, being projected on the screen as soon as I stop sharing. The last thing that we will show you guys how to do here is how to share a YouTube video. Um, there have been some reports of people kind of the students at home on Zoom having trouble with audio lagging behind when you share a video. Uh, I haven't had any trouble with this recently, but if you do run into any trouble and students are saying it's not working, the quality is really bad, you can always grab the YouTube link that you're using and put it in the chat and tell students, go watch it on your own, you know, mute your Zoom, go watch it on your own and come back when you're done. But if you wanna give it a, tr a try, I've had success with this. So you could always try it. And that way you're actually watching the video with the students in front of you and your students at home. So I'm gonna come back over to my second screen. I'm gonna do pretty much all of my Google work on my second screen. And I'm just gonna leave my first screen, my laptop for my Zoom, um, because the second screen is what my students in the building are seeing and they don't need to see the people on Zoom. So I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna do my YouTube search and I want to show my students this Our Planet episode. So I'm going to do everything I would normally do if I was just showing it in class. I'm gonna make it full screen. If I want my closed captions on, I would put them on. I've noticed recently the YouTube closed captions are really tiny, so for sharing screen, it might not be super helpful. Um, and I'll make sure my volume is on and up before I start playing my video. What I wanna do is share my video screen before I hit play so that my kids at home don't miss anything. So I'm gonna come back to my normal share screen. I'm gonna choose screen two again, cause that's where my video is. The only difference here between a video and your documents that you were sharing are these two buttons down here in the bottom left corner of the screen share buttons. Um, you'll see it says share computer sound, and then it says optimize screen sharing for video clip. You could choose just the share computer sound first. That's what makes it so that your students at home can hear the audio of the uh, video that's playing. What I always do is I just click the optimize screen sharing for video clip, and it automatically will click share computer sound also. So I'm gonna click share on this. Before I do this, I'm gonna tell my students, all right, I'm gonna start the video. I'm gonna turn my microphone off so that there's no weird feedback, right? I'm gonna mute myself. I might even turn my video off. I don't, I am not totally sure what they see. I think they're just gonna see the video uh, that I'm sharing with them, 
but like they don't need to see me sitting there staring at the screen, right? So I'm gonna turn my video off. I'm gonna turn my audio off, my uh, microphone off and just share screen two with the optimizing screen share. I'm gonna click share and I'll notice like all of my actual video clips, um, like my video choice and like if my students had their cameras on, those all disappear from my laptop screen. It all has something to do with the fact that I'm sharing a video and the optimization of trying to get that video clip in. It kind of like stops doing all the other things in Zoom to try to make that better. So I just have to trust it. It says I'm sharing my screen um, and I then can come over back over to my second screen, hit play and I have my volume off right now so that it's not like blowing you guys out of the water. But um, this would be playing here and my students at home would be seeing it. I can pause it, come back and I can hit stop share and then turn my video and my audio back on. Now I can talk about the video with my students. If a student had a trouble or they wanted to ask a question during the video, they could type into the chat um, they could still interrupt you and like turn their microphone on and be like, Miss Riley, the vo uh, volume's not on or something like that. Um, it doesn't, you know, shut down Zoom, but um, that's it kind of kind of puts everything else in the background so that the video quality is the best that it can be. So we've gone through how to share a video, how to share a document or a Google Slides um, with having students in front of you and at home so that they're both kind of getting the same experience. And the only difference is my students at home are seeing me on the camera right here and my students in front of me are seeing me in person. Um, but everything else is identical that they are getting, uh, which is pretty much the best we can do at this point. And it's pretty good um, in terms of being able to make sure that everyone's getting kind of the same content. They're hearing the same things come out of your voice at the same time. Uh, and they're getting able, they're able to ask questions live if they need to. Um, so the last thing I want to show you is once you're like done for the day, right? You've extended your screen at the beginning of the day. You've got your tabs where you want them. You've done all your Zoom calls and you're getting ready to be done for the day. You want to make sure that you kind of reset yourself so that the next day when you're ready to come in, you don't get lost. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut my Zoom. I'm going to say bye to my students. Bye guys. Thanks for coming to class. Have a good day. Bye, you too. Bye, Miss Riley. Bye. <laughs> so I'm gonna say bye to them. They're so kind, they turn their cameras on to say bye. That doesn't always happen, but sometimes they do. And so I say bye to them. I'm gonna end my Zoom call. I'm gonna close some of my tabs, but I still have my second screen going and I still have, you know, my Aspen open on my first screen. And if I just, you know, unplugged my computer from my dock because I want to run home, that's fine. You can definitely do that. Uh, the thing that you will notice is when you come back into school the next day and you set yourself up for your second screen, um, it's going to revert back to whatever you had before. So what that means is I have all these Google tabs open on my projector. If I just plugged it back in, when I go to open my Google, those are going to open on my projector, even if it's not turned on. So I might be like clicking on my Chrome tab and being like, where is all of my Chrome tabs? And then I would like call IT and they would say, it's on your second screen, just turn your second screen on. So to prevent ourselves from doing that, you have a couple options. You could every day when you come in, dock yourself and turn your projector on immediately so that you know you have both of your screens on. Um, or if you're like, I know I'm gonna forget to do that or I have an A period prep and I don't need both my screens for my prep. Although I recommend to you like, you might start to love two screens. You might wanna do everything on two screens. Um, I could bring all of my stuff back over to my first screen. So I could just drag my whole tab over here, my whole window over here so that I have nothing left over there. Then I could go back to my normal settings. So I would do what I did at the very beginning. I would right click on my desktop, go to display settings and scroll down. And maybe I would just change it to duplicate these displays. 
or I could change it back to show only on one, so it's only using the one screen. Um, either one of those will make it so that you don't kind of have this problem of losing tabs on another screen. Uh, as long as you go back to duplicate the, screen, the screens or show only on one, you'll never like lose things because it's on one screen and not on the other. Um, that's the only kind of tricky thing about the extended screens is sometimes you can feel like you're losing things because it's on one and not on the other one. Um, a couple other kind of tidbits. If you are trying to switch back and forth between extend screen and duplicate screen really quickly, you can click the Windows button and the P key on your laptop and it opens up these kind of options, these project options on the side here. This has the PC screen only option, so it would be just on my laptop, duplicate, extend, or second screen only. The thing that's missing here is you can't rearrange the screens here. This is just like a really quick shortcut. So if my you know, projector was pretending like it was on the right side, but it's really on the left side, I would have to go back into those you know, overall settings to fix that. But if I just wanna do it really quickly, go from extend to duplicate like in a second, um, the Windows key and the P key at the same time brings up this nice little option. I can quickly click extend here if I want to, or I can quickly come back to duplicate. Uh, one thing that I forgot to mention at the beginning is this works exactly the same if you have a wireless projector in your classroom. So I'm on a docking station right now, but I've done all of this with a wireless projector as well. Uh, you just have to, you know, attach to your wireless projector and then follow the exact same steps. I think that's about it in terms of kind of how you would want to set this up. Um, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to reach out. Uh, not an expert by any means, but I have been using both screens kind of for the whole year. Even when I don't have students in the classroom in front of me, I find it really beneficial to be able to have two things kind of open at once without going back and forth between the tabs especially if you're spending time grading things online, putting your grades into a system, the back and forth on the tabs uh, can be really monotonous. And so I think that this is a really great way to kind of save yourself a little time um, and navigate between two different things without having to go back and forth, back and forth. Another functionality that you could use if you wanted to, um, I have not done this yet, but you could actually put your Zoom call on your second screen on your projector so that your students that are in front of you can see the kids that are on Zoom. Um, and you could kind of replicate the same thing for the students at home by kind of turning your camera to the students uh, in the room so that they're kind of being able to see each other as one group instead of just like the individual camera screens um, on Zoom. So that's another option. Um, you could, in theory, have your students that are in the room also be on Zoom so they could all see each other that way. Um, it's kind of up to you. If you do decide to have kids in your classroom on Zoom, make sure they're all muted the whole time. You're gonna get really bad feedback if you have you know, 12 people in the classroom on Zoom with their microphones on. But that's another way if you're trying to you know, keep your class culture and have all your kids together. Um, those are kind of a, two options that you could have there. You could have your Zoom kids up on the projector so your kids in the classroom can see them, or you could have all the kids logged on to your Zoom at the same time so they could see each other that way, just keep their microphones off. Um, I think that should do it, but again, let us know if you have questions and thanks so much for watching.